Hi guys, it's Tori and we're here with my mom, Pam. Uh, and today you guys are in for a treat. Um, we're here with my mom because she is the resident bread baker. Um, and so uh, what type of bread are we making today? Well, we're gonna make two actually. Ooh, First, we're gonna make a jalapeno cheese sourdough and then we're gonna make a rosemary sourdough Ooh. bread. I'm really excited. And all of this is done with aqua and oleum's olive oil, right? Of course. Okay, so this Nothing is- Nothing but the best. So this is like olive oil bread. And then we're just deciding what we wanna put in. The different like additions, like rosemary or jalapenos and cheese. But you could add other things. You can add other things okay. or you can make it plain. Okay. Oh, okay. Awesome. All right, let's get started. What do we have in front of us? Okay, so in front of us, I have a bowl and I actually have it on a scale. I do everything in grams. And um, so what I've done is I put my bowl on top of my scale and I have oh, zeroed nice. out the scale. Okay, so we're going to make a traditional a very, pretty traditional sourdough, I would say. And then at the end, that's when I add my additional ingredients. Um, okay, so I, um, since COVID, found a recipe by The Clever Carrot, and that's the recipe I've been following um, for the last almost a year now, making sourdough. And you've met Chef Joey, and Chef Joey started our starter way back, um, actually before COVID, and we've just been nursing it along all this time. You start out with a flour and water mixture. And so here's my starter now. And you want it to be, have a nice bubble. Anyway. Uh, so it looks like a science project to me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and a lot of people call this the mother. And you, Every night we pour some off and we then add more flour and water to the mixture. So I'm cooking with my mother with the mother. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I've already measured out the water. So I'm going to, I have zeroed out my scale and I set my bowl on it. So I'm going to just pour 150 grams of starter, okay? And then you're gonna add 250 grams of um, water. And we're going to start whisking that together. We're also going to add 25 grams of aqua et oleum extra virgin olive oil. That's right, folks, right there. And we're just gonna keep whisking all this together. So try to incorporate it as best you can it, it, because it's oil and water. They don't mix really well as you know, but I like to give it a nice stir and try and get it as well as I can incorporate it. Um, so when you're making bread, you need to be precise. It's like making desserts, right? It's not like when whenever you this. bake, it's a little more scientific, and yes, it's a little bit more precise. I like a lot more precise <laughs> yeah. for me. Okay. okay. All right. Now I'm going to add my dry ingredients. So my dry ingredients um, case it's two hundred. It's five hundred grams of bread flour. Um, I know. The author of The Clever Carrot has come out with an all-purpose flour recipe, but I use bread flour and also 10 grams of fine sea salt. Now, if someone couldn't find bread powder or bread flour, could they, they could just use regular flour, right? There's, I would look for a recipe. I, there's, probably a slightly different ratio due to the fact that there's different amounts um, 
of proteins and what have you like what in the is flowers. The, what is the, I mean, all these, I mean, obviously I know the difference between like almond and carbo, like all those, but what is the difference between bread, flour, and just your regular all-purpose flour? Okay, so the flour types do matter. Well, in this recipe, it calls for bread flour. Like I said, sh the author has come up with a recipe for all-purpose flour. There is a difference in the flours. Um, and it would it would taste different. It would come out It's a not different. so much that it will come taste different, Tori. It's more that the consistency um, is different. All-purpose flour weighs a little bit differently, uh, has... Um, I want to call it protein, and I may be incorrect like in my... Like yeast or... No, no, there's no oh, yeast. Oh, okay. Your yeast... What causes your bed to raise is your starter. There is no yeast in this, per se. No, um... Got it. Okay. Okay, so I just... I just incorporate it by scraping it. And now, Tori wants... Um, Oh, this is my single loaf. So my family loves um, jalapeno cheese bread. So I have cut up two jalapenos and about a cup of cheddar cheese. I will not be eating this one, but in the old days, I loved jalapeno cheese bread. And I work this in when I work in my dry ingredients. But like you could do other, you could do other cheeses, you could do other peppers or other, you could you get could, really, I mean, you could even make this like a, like a sweeter bread, right? Yes. Okay. We've made, we've put walnuts in it. We've put cranberries in it. Ooh, that um, would be good with some warm butter, some butter mm -hmm. with like brown butter and cinnamon or something. Ooh. So, um, Okay, so I'm getting this all to work in, and eventually when it becomes very hard to work and you notice everything is not as incorporated as you'd like, you are more than welcome to use your hands to mush everything together. And um, this recipe that we're using, that you use, is a two-day process, right? Correct. In that, um, this is early evening. We're going to um, let this rest. I'm going to just mush it together here a little bit. And then we're going to let it rest for about a half hour. After we've let it rest um, for a half hour, we're then going to let it rise overnight. And I'll get up early in the morning and um, shape it into um, a, we'll get up a ball. Yeah. We'll put it in a pan. We'll let it rise again for about another hour. And then eventually it will go into the oven. But not all breads actually need two days, right? Just It's not so much two days. It's this because there is no yeast other than yeah. the fermentation that happens between the water and your um, flour to mm -hmm. make your sourdough starter it just needs a longer time to rise got it okay okay so you either need a full day or you can break it up it's just it nice before. to do i do it the night before a lot of people start at four o'clock in the afternoon um and let it rise until the morning um, so it's really like how much time you have. Got it. Okay. Right. But not all breads are something that Okay. So okay. that's how mine looks. It's very, this one is extra cheddary and extra, um, jalapeno in my opinion. Usually, um, but they're Chef not Joey quite, will love that for sure. I there's think. usually a little, they're not a little more flour and not quite as much cheese, but we went a little overboard this time. Wow, that was really exciting um, and easier than I thought it was going to be. So now we'll show you how to make the, the rosemary uh, sourdough bread, which honestly I'm so excited about. Um, I know that I'll be showing you guys another video 
how to work with the Roseberry Olive Oil Sourdough Bread. So now we'll show you how to do that so you can see. Um, it's really, I guess, the same process, right, Mom? And right, just putting this, it. Exactly, but this time we're going to make two loaves. Oh, okay. So that's cool to see like how you double the recipe and then um, go from there. Okay. Okay. So I've put my empty bowl on my... Um, show you guys that. I've zeroed out and we are going to pour in... Um, Oh my gosh, 300 projects. grams and some call for less starter, but this one just happens to call for 150 grams of starter. Okay, I am using, which is probably not the best thing, but I'm just going to go ahead and use my same. Oh, come on, it's just family. And I'm now going to add 500 grams of warm water and to this one we're adding 50 grams of the aqua et oleum olive oil yeah i get it and we're going to stir this all together yeah let's get all that goodness okay okay and we're going to just Whisk this together. Now I'm going to add a thousand grams of bread flour. Oh my gosh! Thank goodness if you're doing it. I would, I would have this all over the kitchen. And we're adding 20 grams of fine sea salt. And Tori, why don't you go ahead and get us um, the um, the the rosemary? Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, and so this is what it looks like, but before, in case you're not familiar with rosemary, it looks like this, and um, then you just literally can go like this and pick it off, or you can, like what I started doing, and I was told I, that's not the right way to do it. I was just like picking it off, don't do that. But, like, just uh, lightly rinse it, and then pick it off, and then, you know, it don't, but you don't want any of the actual stem or the, the sock, so um, only the green part. You can you can also use dried, right? Sure, you you're more than welcome to. But use it's dry. I mean it's better to use the fresh, and it just smells so good, guys. And the cool thing about this is like we didn't even have to cut it up. Like when we did that, um, when we did the pancakes and when we did the olive oil, the rosemary olive oil cakes we had to chop that up. So this was just literally take it off and and go on with, with on your merry way. So very, very cool. You, you could use like zatar, like herbs of Provence. Oh, sure. Yeah, okay. So it really comes together pretty easily. Right. Okay, I thought it was gonna be this hard process because I am not- a It's not butter. hard. This is probably the easiest recipe I have found. Um, Actually, Joey found it, turned us on to it. Um, he was the bread maker first. And then I he shared the starter with me. And you can see it's very soft. It's very pliable. And now I'm really just trying to get all the flour incorporated. I'm glad you're doing this and not me. Ugh. So. Oh no, Tori doesn't. She loves to get messy, but she doesn't like to get messy. <laughs> it's, a, it's a love hate relationship. Okay. okay. So I've got this all pretty much incorporated. Okay. And the other thing is the more it becomes incorporated, the less it really sticks to you. Yeah, I bet. I'll let this one rest for about a half hour. We're going to cover it with um, a warm, slightly damp kitchen towel. We're going to put it in a warm... It needs to be damp. It, it's better to be damp or you can just um, cover it with plastic wrap. Either one works. I usually use a damp kitchen towel. Okay, and this is, it doesn't go in the fridge yet. This is... This doesn't go in the fridge at all. Okay, don't listen to me, folks. Don't know what I'm talking about. So, 
mom is just finishing incorporating this real quick and then uh, we're gonna put a towel on it and we'll show you what that looks like and then and then we're gonna let it sit overnight after in about another half hour we're gonna come we're gonna look at it we're uh -huh. gonna shape it into a, a ball and then we're gonna let it rest overnight okay but right now it's gonna sit it's for just 30 gonna minutes. sit and rest for 30 minutes okay all right we'll be back you guys Okay, we're back. It's been 30 minutes and the bread has been resting? The bread has been resting for 30 minutes or so. It's also called autolyze, where you just let the bread rest. And so um, this time I just covered the bread in plastic wrap. I let it rise, or rest rather, for 30 minutes. And here's the jalapeno cheese bread after 30 minutes. Now all you're gonna do is get ready for the bulk rise. And to do that, all we're gonna do is quickly and roughly form this dough into a ball. Do you wanna go ahead and form it into a ball, Tor? You wanna try your hands at that? And I Nobody gonna... saw my crazy face, which was like deer in headlights. Okay. Okay, and I'm gonna take the uh, rosemary bread and I'm gonna form this into a ball. This was also resting in. So I just take the bread I and I run it around the... Like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> I just run it. <laughs> it's squishy. And you can keep it in the bowl. And there's my nice little ball. Okay, okay. I'm forming it into a ball, kind of. Okay, you got right? it? Okay, with two hands in it? Just your bread is very soft, so I'm going to pick it up. And I think yours is a little harder because of all the contents, but... Yeah, and I'm not going to touch my face because they're a jalapeno, and I'm not in the mood to have crazy eyes. So, I'm also trying a little bit, hoping not to overwork this, but I'm trying to... Um, or incorporate some of the other. So there's our nice little ball of oh my jalapeno cheese bread. I'm actually gonna move this jalapeno over there. It looks so there. much better than when I also, it was and like, Whoa! Here's our ball of rosemary bread. Pull that out for you. We're going to cover them again in saran wrap and we're gonna let them rise anywhere from three to 12 hours my house it usually takes quite a while if you have a proofing yeah, oven they have a cold house they you cold are house. more than welcome to put it in a proofing oven and help it along the way if you're in a hurry um, but we're gonna let ours rise overnight we're gonna get up early in the morning and see how they look and take it from there so have a good night's sleep and we'll see you tomorrow bright and early Take care. Bye guys. Hi guys. We're back. It's morning. The sun hasn't even risen over here yet. <laughs> um, and we just took these, um, the bread dough out of the warming oven. Right? right. I put it in the warming oven overnight, um, basically because it's draftless. Um, and it's a contained area that I don't need to worry about while I'm sleeping, anything happening to this bread dough. So it rises in there, it's a little bit warmer. So anyway, this is the result of it being um, in, the, in the drawer since 10 o'clock last night and it is about eight o'clock this morning. So um, as you can see, it, it rose for about 10 hours. Anyway, so now we're going to take the lovely plastic wrap off this dough and- Can I take it off this one too? Sure, sweetie. Okay. Get you guys a nice little- And you can see, uh, my hands are clean. You can see the dough is really soft and airy and just um, pliable. You could, it's, it's, it bounces right back. It, this is really lovely. It's going to make a really nice couple loaves of bread. And Dutch ovens. I have four lined up, two for each um, bread. The 
rosemary breads are gonna come out slightly larger. There's more dough. The um, I decided to go ahead and make two out yeah. of the um, cheddar jalapeno um, dough just because I decided one was gonna be a little bit too big for us. Um, so anyway, so I yeah, let's show you guys. We have. Yeah, this would be a better one. Yeah, actually, you should touch it because. So I've taken a Dutch oven, taken the lid off. I'm just setting a piece of parchment paper inside it, and then after I show you what we're gonna do next, we'll just put the shaped loaf. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna just drop these, form them into a ball real mm -hmm. quick. Um, other people have other ways of doing things. I really just quickly form a ball. I don't stretch the dough. I don't um, do a, oh a lot with it. I feel like the less it's touched, the better. So we'll just form a nice roll, little ball. I'm gonna drop it into a Dutch oven line with parchment. You can if you prefer not to use parchment and be a little um, more um, ecologically friendly. You can use um, cornbread, cornmeal, excuse me, cornmeal. You can put cornmeal on the bottom of your Oh, bread. that's why sometimes yeah, when you have sourdough, it has that. That little grainy oh, okay. feeling on the okay. bottom. It's because they put cornmeal in the bottom so that it doesn't stick to the pan. I just like how this works because it doesn't stick anywhere. Um, and then it's real easy for me to take it out because a lot of times I just left the parchment paper out of the pan. Got it. So, okay. And some of my okay. Dutch ovens that we're using are very deep, mm -hmm. so it's just easier. And they're heavy and they're hot when they come out of the oven, so it's just so much use easier. Those gloves, guys. <laughs> it's much easier for me to lift out. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take this deliciousness, and I'm going to go dump it on a floured surface. Okay, we've moved from that location of the kitchen over here now, and mom has already lightly floured. Here, we'll show you guys. She's already lightly floured her work surface. And now I'm going to go ahead, and I'm just dumping this dough. Okay, there you guys go. And I'm just, see how easy it was to move? I'm gonna take a dough cutter. I'm just popping some cheese that fell out because these are, I'm taking a dough cutter. Well, I'm cutting. Don't get too close. <laughs> I'm hurry, Tori. I just cut my dough in half, and now I'm gonna take, and I just quickly and easily form a ball like this. Other people stretch their dough. This is all I do, and now I'm going to take it. So, okay. just set it here. Oh, okay. Here's okay, my flour pan. Okay. Here's, there it goes. Awesome. Not the perfect ball, but it's my little ball. Okay. Here's my next one. Which one do you want for this one? Um, I do this little guy over okay. Now, something else that we didn't make. Here's another pan. Put my parchment in it. Forming my little ball. And I'm just plopping it in there. Okay, cool. Thank you. Oh gosh, I can't mess. Just know when you bake, if you don't wear an apron, you're gonna get messy. When you're with me, especially if you're wearing black. So here's our rosemary bread. I'm just gonna scrape it out like that. Now, one thing I feel like we forgot to mention that you were saying to me yesterday is that when you bake, you need to be like in a good mood or in... Oh, I find that if you baking, because it's so precise, it comes from the heart. And um, if you, I've noticed okay. if I'm not in the best mood or I'm not excited about what I'm doing when I'm baking, it doesn't always come out quite as good. So, um, I just think if 
you're making bread because you want to make bread and not because you're someone's telling you to make bread. Um, this was not a forced video. This no, I <laughs> we plan this. Um, you do it um, because you know you're excited to do it. You're happy to do it. Um, you want to yeah. share the love, so to speak. So I just played with it for a little bit. I formed it into a blob. A lot of times I weigh mine. Um, I de decided for the video not to weigh my bread. A lot of times I'll take out the scale and I'll weigh them so that all my loaves are the same weight, same size. This one, we're not gonna, we're just gonna have more fun and we're just gonna eyeball it and cut it in half. What if you don't have one of these thingies? Can you just use a knife, like something else to cut? Sure, just anything that can break it in half. Yeah. In fact, um, when you score the bread, um, mm -hmm. I scored a lot of times. Oh my gosh, you're gonna have to tell us what scoring is. Well, when, before you put it in the oven, you score the well, bread. Well, don't worry, and guys, I'll, we'll show you. We'll show I'll, you. I'll explain it in more depth then. I don't have a lane, so I sometimes use a serrated knife. I sometimes use the kitchen scissors. I like the kitchen scissors. You like. So we'll do that today. So Tori, do you want to go ahead and form one and I'll bring up pot uh, of the tea Okay, so what do I need to do? You're just going to form it into a ball. So don't be afraid of the dough. The dough. I'm super afraid of the dough. Okay, so I'll do one and I'll let you do the other. So I'm just going to take it, kind of play with it. And then in my hand, I make a ball. A lot of people, like I said, stretch their dough and then flip it. I don't. I just make my little ball. I put it into my thing. Put it into my pan. It looks so pretty. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about the rosemary bread. Okay, we're going to let you do the last one. And if you get nervous, I'll be able to, I'll come in and help you. Okay, uh, I'm going to wait till you come back. Okay, okay. so I just Pick it up and play with it for a minute. Oh my gosh, guys. Oh, it's so spaghetti. <laughs> I don't know what I'm Set doing. it back down for it and get a little more flour on it so that you don't feel like it's so sticky. Okay. Now go ahead and make your little ball. Just, just lift it up and... I just lift it up and you? stretch it to the bottom so the that like my bottom. seams are all underneath. Well, look at that. You almost have a perfect ball. Like this? There you go. Okay, all right. Go ahead. If I can do it, you can do it. And put that little... Oh my gosh. Oh. It's okay. Right, guys. It's, it's okay. okay. There we go. Right. There's Tori's loaf of bread. Okay, now what we're going to do is I do put this in a proofing oven. Um, the bread needs to rise for an hour. Okay, but if you don't have a proofing oven, what can you put Just it? put it in a warm, draftless spot, cover it with a damp, warm towel, um, saran, can you whatever. Saran again for, right. Okay, so I gonna, actually am just gonna throw mine in the proofing oven without anything. Okay, so we're gonna let these guys rest. For at least for an hour. Is we're that gonna let them rest? Sit. Well, we're gonna let them do their next rise, their final rise. So for an hour, they're gonna be in my proofing oven. Sometimes I stretch it to an hour and a half. I kind of look at the dough. It rises a little bit. It gets um, a little translucent in places to me. Um, and then about a, in a half hour, because I don't necessarily want to come back, but in a half hour, I'm gonna turn all my two ovens onto 450. Um, I can get two loaves in each oven. So we're gonna turn our ovens on to 450. We're gonna heat them up really well so that when these babies are ready to go in the oven, the oven is hot and ready for them. It needs so, to be hot, okay. Yeah, a nice 450 degree. Well, we're gonna let these rest. I'm gonna do a workout and maybe take a shower. <laughs> and we will see you in an hour. All right, see you guys, we'll be back. Hi guys, we're back. I've worked out and taken a shower. No idea what Mama's done in this <laughs> last hour. Um, and now the bread is done um, resting? It rose. Rising. Okay, it I'm so bad. Second, second rise. We let it rise for a little bit over an hour. 
Um, like I said, my house is kind of cold, so I did it in my proofing oven. Kind of cold. Your house is always cold. I'm mm -hmm. always running around in like another sweater or hoodie with slipper socks on. Like this house is freezing. <laughs> we also heated up our ovens to 450 degrees. Um, so now you can see. Oh, here we'll we'll do a better camera angle. See you guys. Oops, sorry. So we have Look all, at four all that loaves of bread. We have the two jalapeno cheese and the two rosemary. So I'm, I just did this very quick and easy. I do not own a lame. I've tried it with a serrated knife. I've tried it with a regular knife. I always kind of have a problem. So I've gone to the scissor method. So what I do is I just cut an X in the top of my bread and I go way down. So I'm just gonna, there's one, two cuts, and then I cover it with a lid. Okay, what if you don't have a pot with a lid? Is that okay? I would try and figure out something because you wanna create um, like a mini oven within the oven because you want some steam to get in here. So this okay. is why you cover it. You're creating like a steam oven within your oven. Okay, got it. Okay. Then I'm doing the next one. And like I said, I get down in there. Tori, you wanna do the, the last one? Just go all the way down. Don't worry that you're, and I'm just laying the covers on. Don't yeah. be afraid. Did I go down in them? You did perfect. Okay, yay. You did perfect. There's Tori's ex. Okay. Okay, so now we're putting the lids on. And then we're going to just set these babies in the oven. The minute that I know they're in there securely, you're going to lower your temperature to 400. So you keep it, you start at 450 and make sure it's really hot, hot. and then they go in and you lower it. I okay. lower it to 400. You're going to keep the lid on them for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, you're going to take that lid off and you're going to cook it at 400 degrees for an additional 40 minutes until they're nice and cold. Okay, so put it in 450, then move it down to 400. Mm -hmm. After 20 minutes, take off the lid okay. and cook it for an additional 40 minutes and then take them out of the oven. Now here's the hard part. When you take them out of the oven, they really need to rest for an hour. Um, everybody's dying to break that bread open, but really wait the hour. Um, it, it just, it needs to rest for an hour before you um, go ahead and break that bread, so to speak. So anyway, okay. I'm gonna okay. get these babies in the oven and we will show you step by step. Um, Tori, I'll take pictures, I'm sure, of um, We will keep progress. you so posted. I'm gonna go ahead and get these in real quick and we'll see you in 20 minutes. All right, see you soon, guys. All right, we are taking these suckers out of the oven. Look how beautiful they look. Oh my gosh. All right, we are just taking these guys out. All right, look at these puppies. Okay, so this is the jalapeno cheese breads, and then these are the rosemary. Ah, so good. So we're gonna let these rest for an hour, and then we will come back and show you what the inside of one looks like. Mm, so excited. We'll be back, guys. Okay, guys, the exciting part is finally here. So the bread came out of the oven and then we let it rest for about an hour and now look at this beautiful rosemary bread i'm so excited it's like the size of my head i think <laughs> anyways um so now we're gonna cut it and then uh show you what it looks like inside so get ready mom do the honors okay we gotta back this up Oh my gosh, look at that guys. Doesn't that look 
amazing. I'm so excited. You can see the pieces of the rosemary. Um, oh my gosh, this smells fabulous. All right, now, now I'm so excited because I'm treating myself with some bread. Here's the best part. Oh my gosh. We're gonna try Guys. it without anything because it's so good. All right. Mm. Really good, right? It was very good and you can taste the olive oil. Mm. And they are moist. Crunchy on the outside. Chewy on the inside. And moist on the inside. Yeah. Oh. See you next time. Bye bye. Bye. I'm sorry. Bye. Check it out. Mm.